Okay, today we're going to go ahead and do our second video on the Hornady Lock and Load Progressive Press. Today what we're going to cover is we're going to cover the shell plate assembly. Okay, if you don't have your shell plate assembly properly torqued down, there's four problems you can have. The first problem you can have, and you will have, is your brass will begin hanging up on your loading dies, particularly your resized dies. I have a lot of guys say that, you know, ever so often my brass begins hanging up on my resized die and it seems like out of 100 rounds I smash three or four, okay? That's your first indicator you have a loose shoe, uh, shell plate. Second, your primers won't seat, seat smoothly into the primer pocket of the brass. So, a lot of guys, when that happens, they think they're having a problem with the primer assembly. No, that's not it. That's two different issues. Okay, if your primer is not seating smoothly into the primer pocket of the brass, you either have where your uh, primer slide rides, that's either dirty and needs to be cleaned out, or you have a loose shell plate, okay? Check that shell plate first, okay? Thirdly, you'll have guys say, well, when I'm coming up into my powder position, I'm having brass spill over the mouth of the, br uh, of the brass, okay? that That's... The third issue you can have, that powder spilling over, and you'll see it. They'll say, I get brass all over my my uh, plate. Well, that's caused by a loose shell plate. And last, your eject system. Uh, more than likely, if once your shell plate becomes loose, you'll have problems with that quite often, okay? Especially when the press is new, okay? So there's two problems that can cause eject uh, issues, okay? There's two reasons. Uh, I cover... The second reason in my set in my the video after this one, but a loose shell plate will cause problems with eject. Okay, so there's four issues. Okay, so today what we're gonna do this is what I've done. Okay, let me let me bring my camera over here. Okay, I've been reloading today. What I have here is I have three boxes that I've reloaded. Now I've reloaded these three boxes with this shell plate set up correctly, okay, the way I set it up, okay. Now, what we have left, I'm into this block, okay, How about, you know, a little over halfway through this block of brass, I have this block left, okay. Now, what I did when I started this block is I changed my shell plate, and I set it up with just the flat washer, okay. I'm going to turn this light off so you can see. Uh, I, I have just the, the lock washer and the head bolt, and that's all that's holding down that shell plate. Now, what I want to do, I want to run it this way until we have issues. What I did is I've ran the first, uh, you know, roughly what, uh, just a little over 25 rounds of brass, okay? Because when you get to around 30 or 40 rounds, you start having shell issues with this shell plate, okay? So, now, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take off running this press now uh, what I want to tell you this is a great press There's no, this is in my opinion the, the best progressive press out there period okay it has auto index okay does everything I needed to do it cranks you can crank out a crank out a ton of ammunition with this when I first got this press I did 360 rounds an hour okay the first time you know you know what I do now I do 200 rounds an hour that's plenty for me okay so um, this is a great press. It's, it's so beefy. It's so sturdy. If you don't own one of these and you're considering owning one of these, watch all of my videos and I'll guarantee you, you'll own one. Okay. And you can refer to my videos as you're setting yours up to get yours to run. I don't run, I don't run the brass feeder, the automatic brass feeder, and I don't run the automatic bullet feeder. The reason I don't is this is therapy for me. I don't, I enjoy putting my brass on. I enjoy putting my bullets in. But if you're going to, or if you already do, run the automatic brass feeder, the automatic bullet feeder, I think that's awesome. That's so cool. Uh, now, if you set your press up the way I'm going to show you, you can run those. I could run those if I wanted. My, my press runs absolutely perfect. It's the way I want. Do they hiccup? Yeah, they have little problems here and there. But when you watch my videos, you'll know how to get your press dialed in. And if you have those little hangups, Fix it like that, and you're off and running, okay? So, what I'm going to do for the video, normally I let the ammo pile up into this, and I put it into the into the, the ammo box. 
because of the video, because I'm going to run a second round block of, of ammo through here. For now, I'm going to take each cartridge and put it into the box. So I'm going to have to go a little slower because it's hard to make a video, talk, chew bubble gum, and walk at the same time, okay? I am not perfect, and if I mess up, you can laugh. Joke's on me, okay, guys? That's another thing. If I mess up, I'll show you where I messed up. We'll show you how to fix it, and we're off and running, okay? So with that said, what our goal right now is I'm going to go ahead and get my light turned on. Always when you're running these progressive presses, be able to look down and see your powder. I don't use a powder cop. This is my powder cop right here, okay? This protects my powder cop. Always put your protective glasses on, okay? So now we're going to take off running. And what we're not trying to do here is we're not trying to run a marathon. I'm not trying to get out as much ammo as I can. This is an instructional video, okay? That's all it is. And uh, so if we just kind of creep along, that's fine, okay? Like I say, the added step is I'm going to put the cartridge into there. So when I run the second block, I don't have to fill this one to do that. Or I don't have to um, empty the bin to do that, okay, guys? So I'm probably laughing because I'm like all over the place here. But like I said, it's kind of hard to, to do all this at once, you know? So, okay. Uh, the press feels good. No problems, no hang-ups, you know, no nothing like that. Now, if you're the kind of reloader, okay, that you go slow, that's okay, you know. Some guys, they kind of beat themselves up if they go slow. I'll tell you another thing guys do is when they make a mistake, they, they beat themselves up really bad. And don't do that, you know, have fun with it. If You know, if I smash a piece of brass, you know, I don't worry about that. Don't worry about that at all. Um, one thing that I do, you'll notice, uh, normally when I come to the top, for, for right now, I won't put this cartridge into the, the ammo box. When I come up to top dead center, that's when I check my brass out. That gives my powder a chance to drop, okay? And uh, naturally, you know, uh, if I wasn't doing a video, I'll try and get my cadence up here so you can see how I do. I'll quit yakking. Stroke, I check my brass out, powder drops, flip the brass in, look at the powder, okay? Now I come to the top stroke, look at the brass, put it in, grab the bullet, look at the powder. You know, that's, that's how I do it. And I will tell you guys something. I'm starting to have little issues. I had to realign that brass going into the resize die. And my ejex not it's not working properly. Keep your eye on that. If you back the video up to about three or four rounds previous to this, you'll see that 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 eject hung up. Let me uh, get these into this. I think we're getting to where uh, we're going to tear this down because I'm starting to feel uh, that I do have issues. The two issues I'm having is one, my brass going into the resize is beginning to hit on that resize. And two, my eject is not wanting to work smoothly. Um, a loose shell plate, you can have a lot of problems with, with your eject, without a doubt. It's going to haunt you most of the time. A loose shell plate, see there it drug on the eject. A loose shell plate isn't always going to affect the primer going in. Okay. There, I'm hanging up on my resize. A, re, uh, a loose shell plate, you're gonna you're gonna feel that a lot on going into the resize, and you're gonna feel it a lot uh, on the e eject. Okay, see there, I'm hung up. You see that? So what what's happening is um, my shell plate's loose. It's real loose, and um, this is for, this is just so perfect because it gives you a chance to 
to see first hand. You know, this is what guys struggle with, right? So what I've done is I told you we break this press, right? Well, I didn't mean I was gonna take a hammer to it. What I meant was I was gonna set it up in a condition so it would just kind of have runnability issues like what you might struggle with. And then you can see what I did to correct that, okay? What I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna just say, hey, I had this problem with my press, but I fixed it and then run uh, 10 rounds and shut the camera off. I'm not gonna do that. Okay, right there, you know. Yeah, it's hanging up. So at this point in the game, we are, uh, we're having runnability issues. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do at this point, I'm just gonna stop, okay? I'm gonna clear my shell plate off. If you have to stop anywhere in the process, this is what you wanna do. Take everything off the shell plate. Pull the top off your powder hopper. Dump out any powder that you might have, okay? We're just gonna start over, okay? What you wanna do is segregate all the different bullets. This one needs to be taper crimped. Okay, these three have primers, no powder. So now one at a time, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go make sure we see powder. I'm gonna run my bullet into the, the cedar, taper crimp it, okay? I'm gonna do that on all three of these. If, so what I'm doing is all the, all the brass that was in process of, I take out and I individually run them all through. Now, I don't know if you just heard that on the video, okay, but I got hang up issues. This shell plate is probably coming pretty loose on us. And now here's the thing with the shell plate, guys, is guys will go, you know, it's kind of weird. It, it doesn't do it all the time. It's just kind of intermittent. Well, that's right. Here, okay, last one, taper crimp. Just gonna run around, taper crimp it. Okay, there. Now, what's happening, okay? This is really important. I wanna check my correct overall length on this and I'll tell you why. My shell plate's off. Here's the fifth problem you can have. A loose shell plate can affect your correct overall length, okay? Here's why. Okay, let me let me look at this one thing at a time. Okay, I'm fine. 1.475 is what I wanted and I'm at 1.472. I'll take that, okay? Um, here's what happens. When the shell plate gets loose and it begins moving on you, just not this way, but this way, okay? Let me get this camera up here where you can see a little better and I'm gonna turn this light off so we reduce the glare. Okay, if the, the shell plate, you're gonna have adjustment. Oh, look how loose that is. Look at, you see that? Do you guys see that? Which, you can run that that way and intermittently have problems. But the problem with that shell plate being that way is now when I come up here uh, for my taper crimp, I'm gonna snag the corner of the bullet just on the tip of that brass, that reloading die, and it's gonna <laughs> reduce my correct overall length. That's really dangerous, okay? So let me pull all these cartridges out of the, the uh, catch bin here. And uh, so there's a fifth issue you can have. It's going to change your correct overall length. Now watch this. Watch this very carefully, guys. Look. Look at that. That's a that's a big problem. Now let me show you um, something here. I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to show you what I did to fix this. Okay. Some guys at first don't agree with me, but once I explain it to them, they, they do this and they love it. Okay, I went down to the hardware store and I got a 3 8 inch lock washer. Okay, can you see that? Okay. What you want to do, put the shell plate on, put the flat washer on, and then put the lock washer and then the head bolt. You don't want to put the lock washer on top of the shell plate because it'll gouge it and at $38 plus tax that's that's really hard okay you want to take care of that shell plate so put the flat washer you put the lock washer and then the head bolt now a lot of guys they don't agree with the lock washer because they will they say you're going to over torque it no you're not it's just it's under the torque load for a longer duration of while you're tightening it so as you can see just by hand it's already 
I could almost run it just like that if I wanted. But all you gotta do is this, okay? Get your Allen wrench, okay? Again, turning it, okay? Now watch. All I'm gonna do is tighten it up to the point that the ball bearings break over on the detent spring, and that's all. But as you can see, it's under a continuous load, and you can use it. There we go. That's all that I'll, I'll, I'll push my finger against the shell plate. That's it. That's all you need. Now, let me tell you something that you don't want to do. What you don't want to do is you don't want to stick a screwdriver in here and over torque it. I know guys that do that. You, you don't need to do that. They'll do that just when they, even if they just have like a flat washer. But even if you torque it as tight as you can get it, it's still going to come loose on you. Okay. So put the flat washer on there and, and get that dialed in just like that. So, now, this retainer spring, look how bad this is getting. It's getting so bad. A lot of guys, they don't like this design. They say, gosh, you know, I, I don't like that design. It's a poor design. And I say, well, why is that? That's not a bad design. You can run that spring till it breaks. The only problem you're going to have with the spring is if it binds up or breaks. Past that, it'll hold brass, okay? So, I'm going to put that on there like that. Now, to get your spring uh, dialed in, you want to put your index finger here. You want to come up to uh, to you know, uh, just halfway, come come back down, and you want to push the spring into the machine groove. Okay, now do it one more time. Half index up, half index down. Now your spring is flush, so your brass will smoothly slide over that without snagging on the spring. Okay, so that's how you want to do that. Uh, now, for some reason, okay, I have a uh, my, my my brass or my, my primers are are. Uh, kind of bound up here on my priming assembly and I don't know why it's, it's, it's been running really good that's okay I told you if we had a problem along the way we'd fix it um, you know it's a lot of guys they, they get frustrated you know and uh, hang on guys I'm sorry <laughs> I gotta get an allen wrench here A lot of guys get frustrated because, you know, they might get a have a problem with the priming assembly, but the, the fact of the matter is, is is not, you know, you're going to have hiccups along the way. I, I, I was just talking to a guy that owns a Dillon, and um, and he said, uh, <laughs> my time is off on my Dillon, i got to fix it. You know, they all have problems. Now I'm going to show you something very interesting here. This is so cool. Probably the best video I've made because of this. Look at that. I got a bad primer. <laughs> the primer come apart. I've seen that happen before. Isn't that something? So, you know what? And you got the powder all in there. You know? So, that's why my... Yeah. that, that That's a bad primer. That's why it hung up. And the primer assembly caught that. So... It, we can't blame the, the primer assembly. It's it's obviously doing what it's supposed to, to do, okay? So let's see if we can get another primer here. Look at that, okay? Now, one thing I want to do, I want to pull this back. And I want to kind of spray this because I got all that junk down there, you know? Um, in my next video, I will cover the priming assembly, and I'll cover uh, proper cleaning of all this and how to keep it clean. Um, so I highly recommend you go check that video out. Mm. Good coffee. Got to have coffee when you're reloading, guys. That or a good soda pop. So, okay, I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is pull this camera back now, and I'm gonna run this. If what I've told you is true. I've properly uh, uh, torqued this uh, shell plate down. We've got the lock washer on there, right? And so now we're just going to run brass. If what I've told you is true, I should be able to run brass, no problem. So let's do it, okay? Let's see what we can do. Uh, now I'm bound up. Why am I bound up, guys? There we go. I think that primer was sticking halfway up. So, okay. Yeah, I'm, I sure am uh, binding up. 
and I'm not sure why guys I got a primer halfway stuck in there I kind of wonder if I got a few bad primers in there well hey guess what let's learn together okay you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start all over here my next video I, I show you how to do this okay I've redone this video to make it better okay I'm gonna pull this bad boy apart <laughs> I think that that primer that was bad causing us issues I think that that is dirty in there and so it's it's hanging up on us yeah it sure is dirty yeah see my what's happening is my priming ram won't seat down because I got all that junk in there so that's okay I'm just gonna rip this bad boy apart real quick hey this is the, the part of the video I wanted to show you know this is why I want to do this look at all that crud come out of there that's my problem okay I wanted to I wanted to do a real video you know if I make a mistake guys hey you know what you can laugh at me jokes on me right no problem no problem so you're getting to see someone that has a problem with their press and hey how do they fix it hey that guy he, he wasn't lying you know he wasn't saying he was gonna make it run perfect he just said he was gonna make it run right okay so I'm putting my primer slide back in there there we go now that smoothed it up real nice so now I'm gonna go ahead and reattach this bad boy yeah that's kind of funky on those primers and uh, I just bought those primers so you would have thought I would have rotated those out but I didn't so there you go now uh, my next video shows you how to take your priming assembly apart okay so these other five primers I'm just gonna feed to the top of the tube by hand and um, I'm gonna just leave the camera where it's at for the time being so you get a close-up shot of what's going on okay obviously we're having a problem but we can't say it's the press the problem because you just saw a bad primer in action okay and you know what I'm not mad at CCI <laughs> you know these companies they do a great job okay now at this point in the game I have segregated these I got one with two with primers and one without so I'm separating them if at this point I take this one and I try to deprime it that primer is going to only come halfway out and it's going to be stuck in the shell plate, so you got to remove the shell plate, and then you would have to change the depth of the decapper. So just remember, don't deprime that. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So there's my powder. Okay. Okay, guys, I, I, I want to stop here because I'm going to cycle back around because my light's not on, and uh, I hope that's not going to mess the video up. I Guys, I, I can't stress enough. When you're running this press, get some light on that. You really need to be safe. Get some light. My eye is my powder cup, and, you know, I, I just try really hard to, to watch that each time. You know, if you don't, if you can't see the powder, you want to stop. Safety first every time. Okay, didn't I tell you? You can learn a lot out of these videos. A lot. An awful lot. Okay. Okay, this one doesn't have a primer. So now, up into the resize. Can you guys see that? Yeah, that's perfect. You guys can see that. Now, now look how nice the primers are running now. You know, it just, that primer came apart, and it had all that powder residue, and it was just uh, sticking everywhere. And, of course, part of the little metal shavings and all that, just, it just come apart. So, okay, I got these last two pieces of brass. I'm just going to run them through one at a time. And this is good because you're getting to see that the shell plate is going to stay torqued down. We're not going to have problems, okay? Now, just so you guys know, all my brass is already resized. I resize the D-prime, and then I uh, tumble my brass. But uh, then, you know, I just go through this uh, stage again. That way it locks any corn cob media that might be stuck in the, the brass. So I'm going to shut that off so it reduces your glare. And I got a really cool strobe light. If you guys want to dance for a minute, you can. That's, that's funny right there. I don't care who you are. So 
Okay, we're going to stop for a moment, regroup, okay? Um, so, we have 200 rounds loaded here. My fifth block right here. Let me, you know what's weird about these blocks? I call these Baker's Dozen blocks. There's 60, there's 60 rounds in there. I always get a kick out of that. Okay, so there's 50 right there. So we got our next 50, we got our, our bullets. Okay, the recipe we're running, 240 grain lead semi-wad cutters. We're running those behind 5.7 grains of unique powder, and that's uh, sitting right in front of a CCI 300 primer. They're going to be cruising down range about 700 and, well, 746 feet per second, the book says, so we'll just round that off to 750. The reason I like this is uh, my wife can shoot these, and I can shoot them, and they're just fun. It's fun to get into rabbits with these. And uh, this is my bad boy 44 Special. It's a three screw. It's an old three screw. It's a 357 Magnum converted to 44 Special. And uh, my dad did that when I was in the third grade. It was just such an awesome gun, you know. Yeah, I'll let you check it out here. This is just, you know, it's just it's so cool. It's so cool, you know. This gun is uh, just a kick in the butt to shoot. This is very accurate, too. <laughs> it's got an action job. Uh, just, I mean, the action job on this thing is just, it's just, it's great. So, okay. Now, what we've done, put all the primers in. We're on our last block. We corrected our problem, whether it was the press's fault or not, we corrected it, which you saw, it wasn't the press. The press found that we had a bad primer. Sometimes if your press hangs up, don't get mad at the press, you could have an issue with something. Stop, check it out. Okay, here we go, guys. So now, just to finish the video, I'm not going to... Okay, my primer's hanging up again. <laughs> Wonder why that thing's hanging up. Boy, it is. It's hanging up every time. So we're just going to stop right there. Remember what we do? We just stop. Okay. Take the one with the powder. Dump it out there. Okay. Oh, guess what, guys? I'm out of primers. That's funny. I don't care who you are. <laughs> hey, let's fill these primers and let's go. It's hard to. <laughs> as soon as I pulled that block up there, I should have. I should have topped those off, you know. But you just kind of get talking, you know, and and uh, yeah. So there. Okay, now let me put my primer stick on there. Guys, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not perfect, and I don't want to be perfect. Okay, I can see the powder, but I need to get my light on. I don't want to be perfect. I'm never, ever going to tell you what I do is perfect. Okay, you want to run the next one that doesn't have a primer? Okay. Now that I have this set up, I'm good to go on the primers. Now, here we go, guys. Off and running. Look how smooth that is. Okay, all my brass is going into the the, uh, the loading dies. No issues. Okay, let's watch this one. Okay, I primed smoothly. I'm going into my taper crimp die, my resize die effortlessly okay so there we go we got a working press so I'm just gonna sit here and run it for a few minutes and just let you see you know okay we had a couple little problems one was uh, product error one was uh, <laughs> human error particularly me you guys you go gosh Jim you know <laughs> Come on, Jim. Have another cup of coffee, man. But what we're going to do now is we're just going to run these, okay? Let you just kind of 
see the press and you can go, wow, you know, that, that really works. That guy's press really works. And uh, to be honest with you guys, I, you know, uh, when I get out here and I'm not trying to make a video, I don't have, I don't, my, my press runs, you know. I can come out here and uh, get all my primers set up, get all my loading blocks set up with how many, uh, you know, however much brass I, I want to run, then I go. And uh, for the most part, I don't have hang-up issues. Your primer assembly, that's what a lot of guys struggle with. And my, the video after this one uh, will we'll address that. You need to go to that video. You need to watch that video and check it out. Because your two biggest problems with this press is getting the shell plate dialed in and getting the primer assembly dialed in. You know, that's, that's going to be your problem get those figured out and you're on your way to getting your press running and then I address issues in my other uh, videos about you know how to keep your um, powder measure from backing out you know this powder measure here it's in it's in solid you know and I'm going on 250 rounds of ammo here and some guys say you know after 30 or 40 rounds my uh, powder measure backs out and and uh, then I start throwing uh, you know, uh, inconsistent. Actually, you'll, 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 you won't throw any powder. Once that backs out, that, that, uh, powder measure comes up and it doesn't cycle powder. And, uh, now what do you have? You have a dud, you know. So go into my videos, check those out. And how I do my videos is I do a video on each section. First one was introductory. This one is the shell plate. Next one is uh, the primer assembly. Then I have the powder measure. And then I have the one on how to properly torque your dies. That one, if, if you're not running uh, this press and you're running a, just a single stage press, that's going to go for all presses across the board. Go into the one where I talk about um, properly torquing your reloading dies. That's one that all reloaders can use. You know, that's valuable information. And as I'm going along, you know, I'm, I'm just making little statements here and there for you. And uh, it's all good stuff. It's all real good stuff. So, at this point, you can imagine that if if you had an automatic bullet feeder on here and you had an automatic case feeder, all you're doing is pulling the handle. And then they have this, uh, I haven't seen it, but I guess they have this nifty little thing that it activates the handle for you. And... Uh, but I'll just tell you guys something. Uh, you know, I guess I don't have a bullet feeder and a brass feeder because I enjoy the therapy of the reloading aspect. I enjoy it because of the hobby. Um, my Hornady single stage brass is so fabulous. I reload, you know, you can do rifle on this Hornady, really anything you want, okay? But... I do my reloading on my Hornady single stage press for rifle because I enjoy it. It's such a nice press. If you're looking at getting into reloading, I recommend starting with a single stage. And I'll tell you why. Because even though you get a progressive, you'll always find a use for your single stage press. Okay. However, when you're new to reloading, there's so many variables that to concentrate on the workings of the progressive press, it's easier to have a single stage press because now you're focused on one step at a time and you can take that step and you can dial it in for top performance, each step. It's kind of like my father taught me how to reload. You know, I was really young in my early teens, beginning teens. And I'll never forget, my first job was doing all the depriming and resizing. You taught me how to set that reloading die up. That was my job. My second job was setting the seat die up, okay? And it progressed from there. Well, by the time that I progressed through all the different stages of reloading, I knew all that. Now, had he have said, okay, here's a progressive press and showed me all the stages, it wouldn't have helped me to have a clear understanding of all the different stages of reloading. So that's why I 
I uh, recommend starting with a single stage press. Do you have to? No, you don't. Some guys are a lot smarter than me. <laughs> Most guys are, okay? But I'll tell you, um, it, it's just a nice way to start with a, a single stage press. So we're down to our last three, okay, guys? So this is what's happened in this video, okay? We had a, a few uh, little hang-ups. One was the machine. The other was the, the dummy behind the machine. Hey, you can laugh at me, guys. You can put the joke on me. I, I don't mind that, okay? The thing was this. In, in a real-world video, what you saw was you saw that I had done 150 rounds. Then I set the plate up to where it didn't have a lock washer and it was set to fail. For sure it's gonna fail, I knew it would. You saw it fail, we corrected it with the lock washer, and then we fit successfully, this, look at that, it's nice and tight. You know, I, I couldn't move that if I had to. That's what you want, that's gonna solve five issues that we know of, right? So then we had a problem on the primer assembly. First one was we had a bad primer. It just happens. It's not CCI's fault. It just happens. I don't really care. I just put another primer in there. Two, the primer slide hung up because I forgot to fill it. It's not the machine's fault. It's my fault. No problem. So you got to see how I took the primer assembly off pivoted onto my index finger. You'll see that in the next video and I'll demonstrate that you know, in full detail. So what we have is a great video on your primer shuttle, how to get this dialed in, okay? And uh, as you saw, it really worked. I mean, uh, once we adjusted that, I blew through that block and when I'm out here and I really wanna uh, get some ammo pumped out, I can, you know, no problem. And this press works. If you don't have this press, I would highly consider buying this press. I, I'll tell you, I, I thought, gosh, I'd like to buy a second one, but I don't need a second one, but they're just so nice. So I just, I, I couldn't do without this press now. And um, so uh, based on that, that's the end of the video. I'm going to just say a few things. One, I'm not responsible if you hurt yourself from ammunition you've lo reloaded. Um, I highly recommend you get professional instruction on reloading and how to properly um, uh, handle your firearms, okay? You need professional firearm instruction for you and your whole family. And you and you, you, you really, I can't stress that enough, okay? It, it could save your life and it could be the best thing you ever did. So with that in mind, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it really helped. Go into my all my other videos and check those out, even if you don't have problems, because sooner or later you're gonna have a problem and you're gonna have to know how to fix it, what to do. You might have a buddy who says, hey, I got that same press that you have, and I have I have a problem. Well, maybe you don't have problems, but now you can tell him, hey, this is what causes that problem, and you can fix it. So, based on that, I really appreciate you watching my video. I hope it was a lot of help, and uh, have a great day. Thank you.